You might know how TTL works when you're using just a single flash, but what happens if you've got two or three or four or even more flashes than that? How does TTL work? I'm gonna tell you all about it on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there, everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions right here on Adorama TV. If you've got a photo question, you know what to do. Just go to askdavidbergman.com and submit that form on the site. I just might pick your question to answer right here on a future show. A quick reminder that I'm currently on tour with Luke Combs and I'm still running my Shoot From The Pit live concert photography workshops. Every city is sold out for the rest of 2023, yay? So make sure you sign up for my free email list at shootfromthepit.com. That's where I'm gonna be announcing all future workshops and you'll have exclusive access to get tickets right before the general public does. So hope to see you out on the road sometime soon. All right, today's question was sent in by Amer D. When using multiple flashes in the same optical group, does ETTL fire them all at the same power? What if some of those flashes are larger or more powerful, while others are smaller like the Canon 600EX and the 430EX? The camera has no clue which way the flashes are pointed, so how does it know what to do? That's a great question, Amer. Thanks so much for sending that in. What I'm gonna do is talk about TTL, first how it works with one flash, and then I'm gonna get into multiples. Now, TTL is a very cool system used by modern cameras to automatically control the output of your flash. Early cameras didn't have any automatic modes for flash, so you would set the power manually to fire whatever amount of light you wanted, and that's what it fired every single time, regardless of the exposure you had set on your camera. Then some early automatic modes had a sensor built into the flash itself, and you could tell the unit how much light you wanted to get from that flash. When it fired, the light would hit your subject and bounce back into that sensor. When it determined that it had the amount of light that you specified, usually to get a specific aperture, then it would shut off the flash, ending that amount of light coming out. Now, as the camera processors got more advanced, they came up with the first TTL systems. TTL stands for through the lens because it reads the exposure based on what it's seeing, not back into the flash unit, but through the lens of the camera and into the sensor. In a lot of ways, this is way more accurate because modern cameras can analyze the scene even with multiple flashes and give you what it considers to be a proper flash exposure. Now, if you've been watching me for any length of time, you probably know that I'm not a huge fan of automatic modes. Your exposure is part of your photographic style and there's not one correct exposure for any particular photo. But TTL flash can be very helpful in certain situations, especially when you're moving around quickly and the distance from your flash to your subject is changing rapidly. Regardless, some people also like to shoot portraits on TTL, so it's still important to understand how it works. Now what most cameras do now, including the Canon eTTL system, is it fires a low power pre-flash. When you push the shutter button, it actually fires the flash twice. The first time is virtually imperceptible. It happens so fast and at a very low power setting right before the main flash fires. That pre-flash hits your subject and bounces back through the lens where it's read by the sensor and analyzed by the camera's processor. It determines how much light is needed to get a proper exposure. Now by proper, I mean that it's trying to average out the scene and give you a photo that's not too bright and not too dark. Technically, it's measuring for 18% gray or middle gray so that you've got a good exposure that's not too over or underexposed. Now, this is relatively simple when you're just using one flash. Earlier today, I created a setup in my studio to demonstrate. I'm using my Canon EOS R5 body and the RF 24-70 f2.8 lens. All the flashes are Canon 600EXRTs and I'm changing my settings and firing them from the STE3 RT transmitter on top of the camera. I'm photographing a mannequin head on a tripod and the flashes are all on light stands to eliminate any variables from movement. My camera settings are 100 ISO, 200th of a second shutter speed at f2.8. That kills any ambient light in the room so that the only light we're seeing is from the flash. Now I put the first flash in a Westcott Octa M medium softbox using the Globe Bowens mount adapter. The flash is placed about 45 degrees up and 45 degrees to camera left, so I'll get a simple Rembrandt style lighting look on my subject. And I've got the Westcott grid on there to control the spill of the light from hitting too much of the background. Now when I take a picture using just that one flash on TTL with no other compensation settings, you can see what it does. In my opinion, this image is overexposed. Why? It's actually doing what I told it to do. It fired a pre-flash that I couldn't really see and it determined what the best average exposure was for that image. 
It's looking at the entire frame, including that relatively dark background, but all I really care about is the exposure on the face. The camera can't possibly know that, so it's just averaging out the whole thing. Now, because I have the version 2 firmware on the STE3RT transmitter, it allows me to switch from TTL to manual, and it tells me the exact power it actually used on that last TTL frame that I shot, which can be really helpful. In this case, with the one flash, it shows half power. Now, I could use flash exposure compensation to darken it, which basically tells the camera, shoot what you think is the correct TTL exposure, but then raise or lower the power the amount that I tell you. Now, in this case, I might dial two stops down or so to get the face looking how I want. Now, one Canon-specific note here, the R5 has a face priority mode for TTL metering, which is uh, what it will do is pay more attention to the exposure on a face if it detects one. When I switch it on, the TTL flash fires at one eighth and a third power, which is almost two stops darker than the average setting of one half, and it looks much better in my opinion. In the real world, I'd have face priority on all the time. It's an awesome advanced setting that Canon offers so that the faces are exposed properly regardless of everything else in the frame. But I have that turned off for now and I'm just using average, which is what most camera systems will be using. That's kind of how they work. That's gonna help us really see how the TTL works and what it's doing. So that's one flash, but today's question was about using multiple flashes. With a portrait, there are many times when you might wanna add in two, three, or more flashes to make a more interesting photograph. Maybe you want a fill light on the other side of the face, or a separation hair light, or you wanna light the background separately. Those uses are all very common. I've done portraits with seven, eight, nine lights in them, and I know people who've used a lot more in a single picture. So if you wanna use TTL with multiple flashes, there are a couple of main ways to do it, and every camera brand implements them a little bit differently. I'm gonna talk about Canon because I know that system the best, but there are similarities between all of them. When triggering multiple flashes, you have to put them into groups. The STE3RT gives me up to five groups, A, B, C, D, and E. The first scenario is if I wanna add another flash in the same group. The best reason to do this is if you want more power from one light. Let's say I'm outdoors and I'm trying to overpower daylight with my flash. A small speed light, especially in a big softbox, might not give me enough light, even at full power to light up my subject when I'm outdoors. There are brackets you can buy to put two, three, or four speed lights into a single softbox or a photo umbrella. Every time you double the flash power, you get one extra stop of light. So going from one to two flashes with both at the same power gives you an extra stop. Then going to four flashes gives you two extra stops and so on. So if you've now got multiple flashes inside a single softbox, you really want it to act like one powerful light. You don't necessarily want to control those two lights separately because they're in the same modifier. By putting all of those speed lights in the same group, I'm, I would probably use A in this case, the camera will simply read the light hitting the subject through the lens and adjust all of the flashes to give the proper exposure. Amer asks, what if the lights are different sized flashes? Maybe you have a 600EX and a less powerful 430EX in there together. What the camera will do is set them at the same power level in relation to the full power of that flash. The low power pre-flash might determine it needs, let's say, three more stops of light for the final exposure. It'll move all of them up three stops. It doesn't really care that they're different models. Um, they're, they're, they're both the same power and together, the light combines to give what it thinks is the proper exposure. The thing to know is that it's impossible to have them at different power levels when they're in the same group. You're just controlling power level of that flash. So half power is half power, regardless of how much light is coming out of that particular flash. Now, if you had two flashes in the same group, but you separated them and didn't have them in a single light modifier, what happens then? Well, it really works the same way. As Amer said, the camera doesn't know which way those lights are pointed. It's simply looking at the light in the scene and adjusting the overall flash exposure combined from both flashes at the same power setting to give a good average exposure. In my setup here, I added a second flash with no modifier as a separation light on the opposite side from my key light. I put both flashes in group A and on TTL. The picture is still overexposed for the same reasons I said before. Remember, it's just averaging out the scene. When switched to manual to see what setting the camera chose, this was 1 8 and 2 thirds power. That means both speed lights were at that setting and combined, the camera thinks it's getting a good exposure overall. When I turn each light on individually and set it manually at 1 8 and 2 thirds, you can see what the first flash looks like and then the second flash. Combined in TTL, they light up the entire scene. 
Now, personally, I wouldn't shoot this way. If I darken this image by using flash exposure compensation, I can only darken both flashes together because they're in the same group. I can't separate them. The only time I want to have multiple flashes controlled together is if, like I said earlier, they're in the same modifier, creating basically one light. Or I might have them separated to light a background, and they're on the exact opposite sides from each other, both the same distance from a flat background that I want to just light evenly. That's going to allow me to raise and lower that overall brightness by changing both lights together. I'm never really going to want to you know, switch those up and, and control them separately. Because I'm using these two flashes for different purposes, one is my key light and one is a hair light separation, um, it's rare that I'm going to want to raise or lower their power settings the exact same amount. So this is when I'm going to put them in different groups. Now there are two main ways to control groups, either as ratios or individually. Let's start with ratios. In general, ratios allow you to simply tell the camera to have one group be X times the brightness of another group. Your main group is always A and the second one is B. So in this case, I'll set my key light to group A. You do that on the flash itself, by the way. And the separation light I'm going to assign to group B. Now, once I turn on ratios with the Canon system, the first number is always A and the second number is B. So one to one means that both you want both lights to put out the same amount of power. You wouldn't need to use ratios if you want that, realistically. You just put them in the same group if you want them to put out the same amount of power. But if you want different power levels, you can set it at 2 to 1, for example. That means you want twice as much power coming out of the A group than the B group. Remember, doubling or having the power is one stop of light, is one stop of light difference. So 2 to 1 gives you one stop more light in the A versus B group. 4 to 1 means group A has four times the power or two stops more light than group B. And 8 to 1 means eight times the power or three stops. Conversely, you can set it at 1 to 2, and that's going to give group B twice the power than A. 1 to 4 is four times the power, and 8 to 1 is eight times. Now, here's how the ratio looks at 1 to 1. As expected, that's the same as when I had both flashes in group A on TTL. Here's how it looks at 2 to 1. So the side light isn't as bright in relation to the key light. And here's 8 to 1, which brings that side light down even more. Now keep in mind that these are not absolute numbers. They're relative to each other. And we're still in an automatic mode. So 8 to 1 doesn't mean the key light just gets three stops brighter. You can see that the overall brightness in all three photos is roughly the same because the TTL system in the camera is still evaluating the overall scene so it's not over or underexposed. I think TTL is always going to be overexposed in this particular scene because of the dark background, but the camera has been pretty consistent in what it thinks is right. Now, Amer asked about using flashes that have different amount of power, like the 600EX and the 430EX. Now, I don't own the 430, so what I did to simulate a less powerful flash is I put a couple of neutral density filters over my key light. NDs block some light, effectively lowering the output without changing the color of the light. And when I did that, I raised up my ISO because the flash wouldn't have had enough power to get a full exposure. But at 8 to 1, you can see that even with a less powerful flash, the image looks exactly the same as 8 to 1 without the ND filters. The camera doesn't care what flash is firing. It's only reading the light that's hitting my subject and bouncing back into the camera through the lens. So that's how ratios work. But there is one other way to control multiple flashes. You can go to another mode where you can have any flashes in any group from A to E and then control them individually. Each one of those groups can be set to TTL or manual. Now, on TTL, you can even use flash exposure compensation on each group individually if you want. Now, for this photo, I've got the two lights separately on A and B again. I have them both on TTL, and of course, it looks just like it did before with them both in the same group. But now, I can lower the B group, that side light, three stops using flash exposure compensation just on the B group. I'm thinking this works by actually firing a separate pre-flash for each group. So my key light looks exactly the same, but the side light has been lowered three stops. That's different than ratios with the B light down three stops. Why? It's not comparing the two lights and doing any overall adjustments. It's just looking at them separately with those individual pre-flashes. So the key light looks the same on TTL regardless of what the second light is doing. Then I can choose to simply lower the side light three stops from its base TTL exposure. And when I add the neutral density filters back in to simulate a less powerful flash, it looks exactly the same. 
TTL measures the exposure coming through the lens and will adjust the power of the light as necessary, no matter which flash you're using. So what do I do? Well, I only use TTL in a situation like I said earlier, where I'm moving with my subject and the distances are constantly changing. When I'm backstage at a concert, for example, and I'm photographing the band walking to the stage, I'll put my flash on camera and maybe bounce it off the ceiling just to give me some soft ambient light. That's TTL because I would never be able to calculate and change my exposure fast enough while I'm moving in that situation. But for a portrait, I use the individual channels and set each of them on manual, not TTL. That allows me to determine exactly how much light I want coming out of each of those groups. In this case earlier today, I put my A group at 1 8th power. That's where I think it looks best on the face. Then I set my B light to 1 64th power. I don't want it to be too bright, just enough to give some separation on that side. And then I actually added in a third light behind my subject to light the background. I put that in group C at 1 64th power. Altogether, it makes for a nicely lit portrait. If I want to adjust anything, I simply change that group all by itself. It's super easy, not complicated, and gives me the most control to make my images look exactly how I want. So Amer, I hope that answers your question and clears up some of the confusion over TTL with multiple flashes. Hey, keep your own photo questions coming out there. Go just go to askdavidbergman.com and fill out that form. If you're not already a subscriber to the Adorama YouTube channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. Hit the little bell so you'll get notifications of new shows as they come out from my friends here at Adorama TV. Thanks so much for joining me. I hope you come back next time where I'll have another question to answer right here on Ask David Bergman.